okay this is the first lecture of 11th standard students those who have finished 3 years of foundation with us and learned some of the things of iit requirement in those 3 years so we are beginning with straight line माझी आता लिहायची पण सवय कमी झाली आहे जरा कारण कमी झाले आहेत बॅचेस एव्हरी फर्स्ट डिग्री इक्वेशन दॅट इज एक्स प्लस बी वाय प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू झिरो with at least one of not equal to zero <clears throat> represents a straight line okay now this is a theorem and if you remember we have taken support of pure geometry and we said we know a straight line we know a straight line which is a perpendicular bisector of two of a segment and if we know segment perpendicular bisector of a straight is a straight line then we have we have derived equation of perpendicular bisector and it looks like linear equation like this and therefore if you have a geometrical straight line then its equation looks like linear in x and y linear means power is 1 power is 1 x and y and second is pannuvas that is fine if you have derived equation using locus property if you have derived the algebraic representation of a perpendicular bisector which happens to be straight line and you found that it is linear in x and y does not mean that any linear equation 5x 7y is equal to 23 will represent a straight line may be may not be so converse i am not sure whether we have done the proof of converse in detail in class or not most probably we have done it in ninth standard but i will give you a reference of that we i have done it in ninth standard this year so i will give you a reference and maybe a link on the group where you can go and watch that that is very very involved proof of the converse if any general linear equation is given to you it represents straight line and that is important for us to use but i will not spend time on that i'm doing the entire proof again so you just write converse and maybe you refer to the link or the material that already there with you third thing is two lines two linear equations represent the same line if and only if each equation is a non zero multiple of the other okay so this also we have discussed earlier in foundation now what does this mean let me just explain maybe easy suppose x minus 2y is equal to 7 3x minus 6y well so these are two algebraic 
equations they are different equations they are not the same because the second is 3 times x minus 2y is equal to 3 times 7 something like that or if we write it like 3x minus 6y minus 21 is equal to 0 then it is 3 times x minus 2y 7 is equal to 0 and this is x minus 2y minus 7 is equal to 0 so this part is same but algebraically this expression and this expression they are different however their corresponding geometry is same that is the meaning of this so if two linear equations represent the same line that will happen if and only if their corresponding coefficients have, pro have same proportion are in same proportion 3 1 s to 3 1 s to 3 1 s to 3 now this is true for linear only i don't know whether you remember or not can you tell me what is this solution set x square plus 4y 4 is equal to 0 suppose this is the algebra that i am giving you can you tell me what is the solution set in two dimensional plane जरा थांब आता मी म्हणजे वेगळ्या पद्धतीने तुमच्यावर नजर ठेवा कॅन यू टेल मी व्हॉट इज द सोल्युशन सेट ऑफ दॅट हाउ मेनी विच काइंड ऑफ ऑर्डर्ड पेअर एक्स कॉमा वाय विल सॅटिस्फाय दॅट इक्वेशन एक्स स्क्वेअर प्लस फोर वाय फोर्थ हा आपल्याला हा यू हॅव यू आर सपोज टू बी बी रेडी विथ युअर व्हॉट एव्हर व्हाईट बोर्ड or uh, notebooks where so that you show me the answer that is very very important and very effective so can you show me and can you show me ordered pairs which will satisfy that equation points which will satisfy that equation okay okay sorry sorry ek us dilai mi ek minute ha ha okay tell me what is the solution set of that let me stop it for a that one can okay so only 0, 0 will satisfy this particular equation and therefore geometry of this equation is origin now suppose i write some other expression now uh, 5x raised to 6 minus or plus 2y raised to 2 plus 3x or is equal to 0 okay now this expression i have ensured that there is no negative sign in between and all the powers are even therefore again the solution set of this is a point that to origin understand this and therefore these are definitely two different looking linear uh, not linear these are definitely two different looking algebraic expressions however their solution set is same and their coefficients are not proportional to each other they are different this can happen in higher degree however if it is linear it cannot happen if it is linear and if the two solutions two linear equations represent the same geometry then it will be straight line by previously proved two theorems and their coefficients will be proportional that is what is the point that i want to bring it to your notice are samajh le ka sagena and now having understood how the example is develop counter example is develop you can develop infinitely many counter examples like that not necessary every time it is going to be origin because you can do shift of origin and get some other point also to solve a given expression etc laksha dete tumcha therefore if it is linear and if it has got solution set same it represent geometrically the straight line then there must be a constant multiple constant multiple of the first line which gives you second algebraic expression okay let us move third thing we have done fourth 
then there are definitions which i am not spending any time i just write inclination which we know it's a measure of angle with positive x axis measure of angle made by a line i mean the angle through which positive x axis is to be rotated in anti clockwise direction so that it coincides r becomes parallel first time to the given line then we have defined slope it is distance traveled in positive direction of y axis per unit distance traveled in positive direction of x axis then we learn two point form of equation of line using locus i hope you understand and remember the locus problems let p x dash y dash belong to desired locus then algebraic condition and then algebra and then you get final algebra in terms of x dash y dash and it was your representative point replacing x dash by x and y dash by y we get desired locus so two point for x minus no sorry y minus y2 upon x minus x2 is equal to y1 minus y2 upon x1 minus x7 now if any one of you is not aware of these you should go and revise you should not ask me to point form slope intercept form y is equal to mx plus c it is two intercept form x upon a plus y upon b is equal to 1 where a and b are intercepts of x axis and y axis normal form okay so can somebody tell me what is alpha and theta this is line whose equation we are supposed to find out it is given that this angle is alpha alpha is the angle of perpendicular from origin on to the line with positive x axis and that is alpha and p is this distance so okay i uniquely determine the line now the line makes the uh, normal to the line normal means perpendicular the normal to the line from origin makes alpha angle with positive x axis and the line is p distance away from origin find the equation of line that is the problem given to you <clears throat> the x coordinate of that point will be p cos alpha p sin alpha so we got one point on the line now slope of this normal is tan alpha therefore slope of the line will be minus cot alpha so y minus p sin alpha y minus y1 is equal to minus cot alpha times x minus p cos alpha so if we write cot as cos 
alpha upon sin alpha. Then we get y sin alpha minus p sin square alpha is equal to minus x cos alpha plus p cos square alpha. And therefore, if we take this fellow to LHS and this fellow to RHS, we get this equation, which is called normal form and normal is for this norm. Okay. So, yes. The two intercept form ni pan hata. Hey? Two intercept form. Oh, sagay ni wana. All. I mean, all these representations are of same line. Therefore, it is again it. Only thing that now I would like to tell you is, ah, suppose we have been given two x plus three y or four x plus three y is equal to twenty five. Suppose this equation is given to us. and now we visualize this equation in this form then x is x 4 cannot be cos alpha y is y 3 cannot be sin alpha therefore what we should do i should assume i want something here and something here to whom i can say cos alpha and sin alpha therefore what is i divide by 5 4 by 5x Plus three by five y is equal to twenty five by five. That I do, and now my statement number three above allows me to do that because it is the same straight line. Coefficients are proportional. Now four by five can be cos alpha. Three by five can be sine alpha. And why I have divided by five because cos square alpha plus sine square alpha I should get one. And therefore, RHS is your distance from origin, which is equal to five. Which otherwise also, if you use distance formula, you would get four into zero plus three into zero minus twenty-five absolute value divided by radical four square plus three square is your distance, which is our p is five. Actually, we have done the same calculation here. That is what we divided it by five. So this and this is one and the same. We can always visualize this coefficient as cos alpha and sine alpha, and then the RHS would be the distance from origin. That is the very very important use of this normal form. Can you understand this? Let us put it up. Nine. Fifty-seven percent, fifty percent. Ten. Polar form. X is equal to x naught plus r cos theta. Y is equal to y naught plus R sine theta. Now maybe we have not developed this, but this is very very easy. You have x-axis, y-axis, and you have a straight line. That straight line makes angle theta with x-axis, and there is a point, base point, on this line, say here. Which is x not comma y not, and you want to find out the point here, p x comma y, which is r distance away from base point A. Then, if this is the setup, then you will realize. That the x coordinate is going to be x not plus r cos theta. This is r cos theta, and y coordinate will be y not plus 
r sin theta okay now in the earlier discussion as well as in this discussion i am considering only one geometric position of the line an angle okay so somebody may have a question that if there is a obtuse angle alpha then what will happen if there is angle alpha which is greater than 180 then what will happen fourth quadrant alpha is this way what will happen we have not given any consideration to while developing this while developing this equation we have not given any consideration to the alpha lying in first quadrant we have not done that yeah, the the point this point on the line will always be p cos alpha and p sin alpha okay so whether the line is like this or if it is like this or if it is like this or if it is like this in the equation is not going to change because we are while developing we are not given any consideration for angle being in first quadrant similarly here <coughs> this is any point on the line now here comes the important thing that whether r is positive or negative and are you considering this and direction positive or not but it has to be decided once for all okay if i give r is equal to 5 units there will be two points one this side and one this side on the line which are at five distance from base point if r is 5 but we can always say that this is minus 5 this is plus 5 or vice versa depending upon what is your convention and what you would really like to achieve now why are these forms important these forms are important and maybe we will solve few problems using this form and then solving is easy if you stay in cartesian coordinates x comma y then it is extremely difficult to calculate but you this is one way of getting into trigonometry and distances from your xy system okay suppose I give you general degree 2 or 2x square plus 3xy plus 4y square minus 3x plus 6y plus 7 is equal to 0. We don't know what this is right now. And maybe we are interested in finding out oh, are there any points of intersection? Is this what is this all about? Is there any tangent and what is the point of contact of that tangent? But then if we really want to solve this and figure out maybe this is ellipse and I want to find out the length of major axis and this is not in standard position therefore it is looking like this. I know ellipse will look like this in standard position whenever we learn ellipse it will look like this and still I say that this is ellipse but rotated form or something like that. In that case, to find out the length of the major axis or minor axis, or maybe the eccentricity of ellipse, many a times this equation in polar form is very, very useful. And now this is an equation of straight line in polar form. But if this is your base point and this point is x this r distance away from the base point and it makes theta degrees to positive x-axis then coordinates of this point are going to be this and where r is a distance from base point if you assume base point to be origin then it is r cos theta and r sin theta then it becomes still simple so in due course of time we will use this polar representation of a point in solving problems and there you will realize that otherwise solving it is extremely difficult but in polar form it is easy okay now as i know many of you if you don't understand something what i say you will ask i am aware of that but there are few new students they should ask anything that they have not understood by stopping me on the spot need to get all doubts clear during the course exactly at the same time when you get that doubt don't postpone it okay 
पोलर फॉर्म नंतर पॅरामेट्रिक फॉर्म इलेव्हन I think we have done this in class, but if you want quickly, I can do it for you. If any general equation of line is given, ax plus by plus c is equal to zero, and point p x not y not satisfies this equation, then ax not plus by not plus c is also true. If we subtract, then we get a into x minus x naught plus b into y minus y naught is equal to zero, and therefore we x minus x naught into a is equal to minus b y into y naught, and therefore we get. X minus x not upon minus b. I will look. Okay. Maybe I put minus here and plus here. So we are going to take. Okay. Is equal to t. Then by simplifying x is equal to. Are you too clear? X is equal to x not plus b t, and y is equal to y not minus a t. This is correct. Now here you can afford to have if you have minus sign here, then plus sign here. Both of them should have opposite signs because t is a parameter. which belongs to real number and real numbers exactly same negative real numbers and positive real numbers therefore if t is positive then suppose you assume this true then y will have a negative value in between here and if t you take t negatively signed then i mean you understand that t can be positive or negative therefore both these signs should be opposite to each other which i maintained here But then this should have been B and this should have been A. That is what we get. And in MMR also it is not correct. So I have to correct. And this is a very old MMR. Ha! समझते हैं सगाई ना? This also is a very useful form of equation of line. Okay, twelve distance formula. Distance between two points is radical x two minus x one bracket square plus y two minus y one bracket. This thirty. distance of x not y not from x plus b y plus c is equal to 0 which is d is equal to a x not plus b y not plus c absolute value divided by radical a square plus b square we have develop these equations in class put a perpendicular from x not comma y not on x not minus a times 
x naught plus b y plus c divided by a square plus b square comma y naught minus a inside bracket b inside bracket a x naught plus b y naught plus c divided by s plus b square reflection plus by 2a and b by 2b okay. 40 50 two lines with Low M one comma M two are parallel if and only if M one is equal to M two. Perpendicular if and only if M one and two is equal to minus one. 60. Acute angle between two lines is given by or maybe tan of acute angle. Tan theta is equal to absolute value of M1 minus M2 upon 1 plus M1 M2. M2. Also, we know this. I think we have done it in 10 standard. Okay, now I give you some exercise. A1x plus B1y plus C1 equal to 0, a2x plus p2y plus c2 is equal to 0 and a3x plus p3y plus c3 is equal to 0. R. Concurrent. Then Find relation between AIs, BIs, and CIs. So, those who know will write directly, those who do not know should try and find out. Okay, now it is simple because. You solve any two of them simultaneously and get the coordinates of x and y in terms of a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2 if you are solving first two lines simultaneously. And once you get that x, y coordinate, you should put that in the third equation and third equation must be satisfied if that point is on the third line also. Point of intersection of first two, if it is on the third, then they are concurrent and therefore that is where I mean whatever long expression that you have got also can be represented like this. This determinant is zero and I think we know how to write down the expansion of this determinant a1 into b2 minus c3 minus b1 into a2 are i did to me parat 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 hmm. a1 into b2 c3 minus b3 c1 c2 minus b1 into a2 c3 
माइनस ए थ्री सी टू प्लस सी वन इन टू ए टू बी थ्री माइनस ए थ्री बी टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो यू विल गेट दिस आफ्टर साइमटेनियसली सॉल्विंग टू एंड पुटिंग इट इन द थर्ड मीनिंग ऑफ दिस एक्सप्रेशन इज सेम एज दिस डिटर्मिनेंट it is easy to remember okay next find the formula for area of triangle formed by a1 x1 y1 now what i want is find formula for area we should have area first do it get me the formula for area of triangle now <clears throat> you have some triangle is it something like this Of course, need not be parallel to x-axis. The third line. Are it chap? I tell us there now. So what you should do is you should consider these parallel trapeziums. Add, subtract, do something. And then get this half delta is equal to half x one y one one x two y two one x three y three one is your area of triangle positive area of triangle doesn't matter where this x one y one a one a two a three one if they change their positions clockwise anti clockwise. the positive area is going to be correct okay now one important thing i have to mention here now in this fashion if i have written this first row is a1 second row is a2 third row is a3 then whatever area i will get is area a1 a2 a3 okay so this could be positive or negative now that is why actually i had put this positive area because we are interested in numerical value of area and in that case what prajwal is saying is correct maybe we consider this as a positive then the answer is correct but even if we don't put this and if we consider this as area then and if we are okay with oriented areas area can be positive area can be negative suppose we are going to call this a1 a2 a3 as a positive anti clockwise positive then if this a2 goes here and a3 goes here then it a1 a2 a3 will become negatively oriented or maybe if i reflect this in x axis then a1 dash a2 dash and a3 dash let me reflect a3 is here reflection a1 is here reflection a2 is here 
हा अरे बापू मामाच आला होता फोन मला कळलं मला करतो नंतर फोन देन दिस विल बी वन डॅश दिस विल बी थ्री डॅश दिस विल बी टू डॅश ऑफकोर्स दिस टू ट्रँगल्स आर कॉंग्रुअंट देर फॉर एरिया इज न्युमेरिकली गोइंग टू बी द सेम बट इफ वी कन्सिडर दिस पॉझिटिव्ह देन दिस एरिया इज क्लॉक वाईज देर फॉर इट विल बी निगेटिव्ह हॅव्हिंग kept these rows as it is okay now if you want to keep it anti clockwise only so maybe you can write x3 y3 y1 as your first coordinate i mean x3 dash y3 dash y1 x2 dash y2 dash 1 and x1 dash y1 dash and 1 take absolute value and half then this value and this value without this absolute value sign they will be opposites of each other nahi no, sorry they will be same because i have changed rows here to make it anti clockwise a1 a2 a3 was anti clockwise here by looking into the diagram so a1 i put here a2 i put here a3 i put here do you understand and that we will learn end of this course when we learn properties of determinant this determinant will have exactly same numerical value but opposite in sign compared to this determinant why we will learn later on but it will be no barobar hai na what i am saying i am saying is okay this determinant and this determinant will have exactly same values no negative sign because we have taken care while changing the rows but if we are writing it like this x1 dash y1 dash 1 x2 dash y2 dash 1 and x3 dash y3 dash 1 half into this then this delta dash and this delta will have opposite sides because you are not changing rows here you are keeping it same so this is definitely this is definitely clockwise this is definitely anti clockwise therefore their signs are going to be different maybe you can cross check this in the evening if you have time that whatever we are saying numerically is it becoming the same or not but that is what it is and we should not spend more time on that similarly oriented area of quadrilateral also can be found out which i will write directly area oriented area of quadrilateral number kitna chal raha hai apna 90 you may cross check this letter on oriented the way you have considered those trapeziums in case of triangle you consider the something similar in case of quadrilateral and find out i won't uh, do it in detail in class you can do it at home 20 let me know whether we have done this in class a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 a2x plus b2y plus c2 equal to 0 a1x plus b1y plus c1 dash 
is equal to zero. A two x plus b two y plus c two dash is equal to zero. Form parallelogram. Find area of parallelogram. अपन एक केले का वर्ग ओके नाउ हैविंग लर्न टेग्नोमेट्री वी शुड डू दिस कैलकुलेशंस लिटिल क्विकली विदाउट टेग्नोमेट्री वुड हैव बीन लिटिल लेंदी नॉट दैट इट कैन नॉट बी डन Okay. Suppose this pair of line a one x plus b one y plus c one is equal to zero. So slope of these parallel lines is minus a one by b one, and slope of these lines is minus a two by b two. Suppose this distance is b one. This angle is alpha. Angle made by A two angle made by two lines, and then suppose this distance is d two. Let us consider the base as b. So delta required delta is equal to b into d one, where this is the distance. But we don't know b. Solving simultaneously will be huge. Therefore, can we express d two? Can we express b in terms of d two? Uh, d two. This is alpha. So d two upon b is equal to sine alpha. Therefore, b is equal to. D two upon sine alpha into d, which is d one d two sine alpha. So if we know sine alpha, we should be able to get the area because distance between the parallel lines we know. Okay. So tan alpha is equal to absolute value of m one minus m two upon one plus m one m two. Now m one is say a one upon b one minus a two upon b two upon one one plus a one upon b one into a two upon b two. Is that correct? Which will be equal to If we simplify, what we will get? Denominator b1, b2, two ni kada hai. So a1, b2 minus a2, b1 upon a1, a2 plus b1, b2. Is that is what is our tan? But if we really see in right angle triangle. If this is alpha, this is a one b two minus a two b one, and this is a one a two plus b one b two. Then sine alpha is. We have to find out hypotenuse. This upon hypotenuse. Okay, so hypotenuse is going to be h is going to be equal to root of. A one b two minus a two b one bracket square plus a one a two plus b one b two bracket square. 
Now there is a little bit of algebra you need to work out over here, and then you will realize that it gets very nicely factorized between this. Eventually, is exactly equal to a one square plus b one square. We want we can do it. A one square b two square. Plus a two square b one square. Now all the four terms are same both the places. One is minus, one is plus. The middle term will get cancelled. A one square a two square plus b one square b two square. Now if we take a one square common, we get a two square plus b two square, and then b one square common then a two square plus b two square. that is what is this factorization and therefore your sin alpha is equal to absolute value of a1 b2 minus a2 b1 upon radical a1 square plus b1 square into a2 square plus b2 square okay and therefore What is now distance? So delta is equal to distance d1. D1 is c1 minus c1 dash upon radical a1 square plus b1 square into c2 minus c2 dash upon radical a2 square plus b2 square into One upon sine alpha. So these two brackets go in the numerator. Root of a one square plus b one square, a two square plus b two square. They go in the numerator, and in the denominator you end up getting a one b two minus a two. And surprisingly, these two get cancelled out, and you get a very nice formula for. Delta of parallelogram is equal to c1 c1 dash c1 minus c1 dash into c2 minus c2 dash upon a1 b2 minus a2. Okay, so this need to be remembered. Now let us analyze. Is this formula correct? we can always do this whenever we find out a new formula now this is a general case that we have taken if c1 and c2 uh, c1 and c1 dash they are equal if c1 and c1 dash they are equal that means there are no two parallel lines it's a coincident line and therefore of course the area of parallelogram must be zero So if c1 is equal to c1 dash, c1 dash we get area zero correct if c2 is equal to c2 dash we get area zero which is correct and what does this denominator say denominator says that if all four lines were parallel a1x1 plus b a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to zero And a two x plus b two y plus c two is equal to zero. Then what will happen if all these four lines are parallel? Then there is no parallelogram. We are assuming that there will exist a parallelogram. But if all the four lines are parallel, now when will these two lines be parallel? A one upon a two is equal to b one upon b two. Is equal to c1 upon c2. Then these two lines are going to be. Uh, no, sorry, I tell you. Uh, when these two lines are going to be parallel, when their slopes are equal, when their slopes are equal. So minus a1 upon b1 is equal to minus a2 upon b2. if this happens then these two lines are parallel that means they are not determining the parallelogram itself and therefore we should not be able to 
find out the area or area is supposed to be tending to infinity no does it happen here a1 b2 is equal to a2 b1 oh that exactly is the same term appearing in the denominator and denominator need not be zero but it becomes zero when all four lines are packed that means whatever formula that we have derived is correct and if we would have not entered into these calculations we should have got c1 minus c2 absolute value term in the numerator we must have c2 minus c2 dash term in the numerator because we want those areas to be zero and definitely we want a1 b2 minus a2 b1 term in the denominator maybe there will be some additional terms here which will give us the area but the moment we want to find out the area considering the limiting cases considering the special cases we need to have these three terms in place as far as whatever formula we will get and eventually these three terms themselves determine the area of triangle there is no constant constant is one so that is what is the cross check that we can always perform whenever we have formula that will help us this cross check will help us to remember that formula also see today tomorrow you will remember it but if you have hooked up this formula with this memory then it is a long term memory 